Hey, what's up? So I'm going to, to talk about now web sockets. Very small introduction, uh, just roughly speaking about it, just to give you enough information to get you started. Uh, I think uh, people think they are really complicated, but uh, to achieve simple stuff, they are really simple. Uh, by what I mean by simple stuff, for example, if I want real-time communication between a server and a client, it's really simple. So let's just start a step by step. What and why and some examples. So what? Let's let's start by talking about HTTP protocol. We are all familiar with it. We all send it, we all send HTTP request. Uh, even if you th um, maybe some people think no, I sent AJAX. AJAX is just an, an HTTP request. So it's not something different. I think people should stop calling it AJAX uh, because at the end it's just an asynchronous HTTP request. Uh, and AJAX is uh, an acronym for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just. I think people just stop, just should just stop using that. It's just an asynchronous request, asynchronous HTTP request to be specific. To, to be specific. So HTTP requests are just a communication protocol on the internet, and that's it. Uh, when you send an HTTP request, a connection will be established on the network, on the internet, from you, the client, to the server. Somehow, uh, if you are a network engineer, you will know all about, all about this, but I'm here just roughly speaking. So after this connection will be established, your request will reach the server. The server will process that, then will return a response to you on the, on the same connection. Now, when the, your response has been returned to you, the client, the connection will be gone like nothing happened. And that's it. So, but yeah, just remember that roughly speaking, you will send a request to the server. A communication on the network will be established on the internet between all the routes, all the servers, and all of the DNSs, all of that. And then a, a, a response will be returned to you, and then the connection will be gone from the network. So that's it. So the, the connection here is an one way from the client to the server. Then a request will be returned and that's it. So the only way to send or maybe to communicate here in this architecture in this using this HTTP protocol is uh, the client should start it. So the client sends information, this is the, the server response. That's it. The client is the one that starts this uh, whole communication process. Without the client, servers are not doing anything. So they just respond to clients, and that's it. This is what we always have been doing with HTTP protocols. Client, server, done. Uh, now, WebSocket is another communication protocol providing full duplex, full duplex communication channels over a single TCP connection. Uh, what this means, I just copied this from Wikipedia, but what this means, uh, a client and a server creates a connection with each other, just like the connection happened there, or maybe it's different behind the scene, but let's just imagine imagine that it's the same connection, kind of connection. Uh, but this connection does not expire, does not end. So when a client connects with the uh, server, it, this connection on the internet will be will be uh, always exist until the client session ends. And there is uh, two ways that the client session will end. The, the browser is closed or the application is closed. Now uh, the connection will be gone. And another thing, when you programmatically in your code close the connection, maybe the user logged out and you will close the connection, the connection because you don't need to notify the user or give it any kind of data when uh, the user is not logged in, right? So that's the case. Or you are uh, close to your browser in web, in web application, it depends that maybe a few, uh, uh, maybe your application, if you if the user go, go off to another another application, you want some notification, so you will close the connection. I'm not that into web, uh, I'm not that into mobile applications, but uh, I think the case is still there as well. Uh, I know some services runs uh, in the background to get some uh, data. They will use web sockets uh, to be. Uh, yeah, I think they will use WebSockets as well to receive uh, real-time information. So the, to return to my point, with this connection, they both can talk with each other, and the server here can actually start communicating. 
uh, if the client uh, requested a connection, so what will ha actually happen? Uh, you will open your web browser to a, to a website, and this website will establish a web socket connection with a server. And now this connection will be uh, established and it will exist there and it won't be gone unless your session will be ended by closing the browser, for example. Uh, and now after the connection has been established, the server can uh, send data to the client, to a specific client to be, ex to be specific. Imagine having a, a, a thousand uh, laptops opening your application and they all having a WebSocket connection with your server and your server can send, to, for example, to the laptop number five uh, notification or data. And it's, it's still, uh, it's all valid. It's all, uh, it's all possible. And uh, in this kind of communication protocol, you can send from the server to the client, like I said, or from the client to the server. Uh, I, I know I just repeat myself a, a lot, but I think this will help uh, uh, to make this point uh, more clear. So why and examples and small history. So usually uh, when you want to have real time feature new application, for example, chat application or notifications uh, a lot of apps have them uh, to do this usually developers wrote client code maybe in JavaScript in Swift in Java for Android uh, to keep asking the server for updates so for example it will send for every five seconds it will send an HTTP request to the server asking hey do we have new updates for this user the server might return something or might not not, not or might not return. So this is called actually HTTP polling. So HTTP polling has two types. HTTP polling, the normal one, just called HTTP polling, and HTTP long polling. Uh, HTTP polling, I will give you, I will define them by examples. So HTTP polling is when you keep sending HTTP request to the server to find if there is any data. Uh, so like I said, every five seconds, I will send a request, maybe every one second. And if you think about it, there are so many unnecessary requests. Imagine if a user that does not communicate with anyone in your application, you will send a request on, the, on his or her behalf for every second. I mean, without any kind of benefit, there is no data for him. So uh, it's, it's completely not good. So don't do this, especially if you have a lot of users. Another kind of thing, I have never seen anyone do it, but it exists when i done some research in the past. It's called HTTP long polling. I think Facebook used to do this in the past, but I'm not completely sure. So it's, it's when a client sends an HTTP request asking for updates, so the same thing here, and but the only thing is different, uh, that the server holds that request until an update happens. Uh, and usually when I look, maybe uh, I looked into some PHP code, what they do is like they call the sleep function. If there is no updates, uh, sleep for three seconds, then go check if there is an update. If not, sleep and keep doing this until there is an update. When there is an update, return the response. And now when the client receives the response, uh, it will do anything uh, the client wants to do with it. Maybe it's a notification or a chat message then it will send the same request again asking and it, it's the application will be stuck in that loop forever just asking for stuff if there's stuff if there is no stuff in the server the server will hold the request until there is something uh, and if you think about it the request will be ended when the, when the server returns something so while the server is working on it it won't be returned that's why that's how they are holding the request by using this sleep function um uh, so the, the HTTP connection will still presented uh, in the network because the server did not return anything because it's keep um, acting like it's working on something by using the sleep function or an infinite loop. I've seen some people do that, but uh, I really don't recommend using any kind of these. Just uh, look at them as a kind of um, like um, history. Uh, just 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 know about them. Uh, no one actually ever asked me about this in an, in an interviews, but anything uh, anyhow uh, Since the server knows first about the data we want to we want the users to see in real time uh, Actually, this is a good point if you think about it uh, 
if, if someone sends you a message, the first one knows about this message is the server because it's got it's reached there, right? So now the server needs to tell you, uh, and that's why uh, web sockets are good. So and HTTP protocols are not built to this kind of things. The server can't send an HTTP request to the client because the client is not listening. Is th there's no server there. Uh, it's only the client sends HTTP request to the server and the server responded uh, res will respond. And since we can't do, or, or since we can't make the server to send an HTTP request to the client, we will use WebSockets to do this. And a client and the server will connect with each other via WebSocket channels. And they both subscribe and e emit events to communicate with each other and uh, I have some examples, uh, code examples to be specific uh, for you with WebSocket and uh, Express. Was, sorry, with Socket IO package and Express. This is a famous package in, package in Node.js. For example, imagining this Express server, uh, we are requiring Express, we are creating our HTTP server, and we are running a WebSocket server on top of our HTTP server on localhost port 3000. And what I am saying, uh, if, if any event of type connection happened, run this callback function. And that's it. Uh, and when, when this connection or when this event happened, is, for example, this code from the client. So the, this client is requiring this socket IO package like, like we did in our, our server. Uh, and it's connecting with this web socket server. We created this one here. On top of Express, and as soon as you, as soon as you call this I/O function and connect to the server, this event will be uh, emitted from the client, and this callback function will be run in the server. And this kind of thing happened because the client emitted a connection event to the server, and the server is listening to this event. So this callback function will be run, and we will console log a user a new user connected, and we will have an interval that emits an event called data with this uh, object every three seconds and the client as you can see is subscribing or listening to this data event and running this call bank function whenever this event is emitted from the server so we are constantly logging this message and by the way this is this is called broadcasting we are emitting this event to all the clients that are subscribers to this uh, WebSocket server. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of questions in your mind, how we can create authentication, authorization. I don't want all the users to listen to the same events, receive the same data. So uh, I, this is not about WebSockets, so it's about RxDB. If you, if you want me to do like authentication at the end or authorization, just tell me. Basically, these strings will be dynamic and will be unique and we will use JWT to authenticate and authorize listening to these channels. Uh, so can you, so you, at the end you can think about it in a very high way that you will have a, a real-time communication protocol from the server to the client or from the client to the server. And this protocol can be split into something called uh, channels where each channel will be specific to a, a single user or a single group of users and you will notify them via this uh, channel. And these channels will be protected and authorized via WebSo with, uh, via JWT. Uh, and that's it. I hope I made, uh, I, I, I presented uh, some good examples for WebSockets, or at least I gave you like a very high uh, overview about them. Uh, I think the documentation for socket IO is very very good for this. I highly recommend that you read it. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you.